Hi, I'm here in my house doing the first of a series of what I'm going to call video boosts. And they will just be a problem or two to kind of um, clear up any misconceptions and maybe push us a little faster in class. Um, it's optional. You don't have to watch these if you don't want to. They'll each be between five and ten minutes long. Um, one of the things I wanted to emphasize is the opening of epoxides. I feel that the opening of epoxides is very, very, very much like the opening of bromonium ions. And I think some people are not seeing the parallel between the reactions. So, for example, um, if I'm making a bromonium ion, as in this case, in the presence of water, which you've seen many times, and you should know how to do this. You should know how to do this cold, okay? This will attack the Br+, the bromine's lone pairs will bite back on the carbon, and the bromide will leave. And that happens in one step. That is not a multi-step process. You will obtain, as we have gone over many times, you will obtain a bromonium ion, okay? You will actually obtain two bromonium ions, but I'm not showing them. One of the things we went over in class was the fact that this is a carbo cation. It's really a protected carbocation. Because it's a carbocation, these bonds are not full bonds. And because they're not full bonds, these carbons have a lot of carbocation like nature. Why are they not full bonds? This has a plus charge. The bromine has more bonds than it's supposed to have, okay? So these are really like carbocations that have been buffered a little bit. And as we know, this bond is stronger than that bond because the tertiary carbon bears the charge better than the secondary due to hyperconjugation, something we've talked about in class. And what you've learned is if you're in water, the solvent, the water will attack from the opposite face on the tertiary carbon, opening up the bromonium ion, okay? But again, this is like a cation. I want you to see the parallel of this reaction. Now, did I finish this? No. I didn't, do, I didn't show the product. I didn't do the proton exchange. I'm assuming you know how to do that. Now, supposing we had something similar I'm going to draw a similar substrate and now I've got an epoxide. And an epoxide is just a three-membered ring ether. Again, I feel epoxidation, acid versus base, if you understand this, you really understand SN2, you understand SN1, you understand acids, you understand bases. So supposing I take an epoxide and I put it in the presence of acid and some kind of alcohol, like ethanol. This is not dissimilar from your quits that people had trouble with, okay? It is well known that if you put these together, I'm not going to go into all the gory details here, but it's well known that if you put these together, you will obtain a um, protonated alcohol. Sulfuric acid is a very strong acid. By now, you should know that. Very strong acid in water dissociates. Dissociation is really just reaction with the oxygen. It's a proton transfer, and the same thing happens in ethanol. Ethanol is very similar to water. Okay. Under these circumstances, what will happen is the epoxide will grab a proton, okay? Ultimately, that's what happens. We want to get to a point with these reactions where things are kind of organic for you. We're going to start working on this this week. But you should start getting to a point where you can figure stuff out on your own. Okay, now, what is special about this? It's a carbocation. Think about it. Why is it a cation? It's a cation because it has a plus charge, and this is very analogous to the bromonium ion. Think back to what I just wrote. It's a lot like a bromonium ion. Here's a bromonium ion. Bromonium ion. That's a bromonium ion. Why are they similar? They're both positively charged. These bonds are not full bonds. These are partial bonds. And very similarly, this bond is going to be weaker because this is a tertiary site and this is a secondary site. 
So what happens in this case? Just like the, bromo, the bromohydrin reaction, this carbon is going to be attacked by the solvent. But what is the solvent in this case? The solvent is ethanol. It's not water. And you should start to see patterns in things. Same kind of reaction, different nucleophile, but it's the same kind of reaction. So what will happen? This will attack from the back face. The methyl will undergo an inversion, and you'll end up with I'm missing an arrow. You know I'm the queen of arrows. I have to put my arrows in. I didn't show all the um, stereoisomers here, but I'm trying to make this point about partial bonding versus full bonding. Now, if you got this, what would you have to do? You would have to put the methyl in because it was inverted, and then you'd want to use the solvent, and I made a mistake. You want to make a, you want to use the solvent. I shouldn't be writing these all out on my little board here. But you want to use the solvent to do a proton exchange. That should look pretty familiar to you, but please try to note this reaction is really the same as this reaction. This carbon has carbocation features because it is only a partial bond because this has a positive charge. Okay? By contrast, okay, by contrast, change your conditions. Look at the opposite conditions. Supposing you have sodium ethoxide in ethanol. This is a whole different, different deal, okay? You would go into the analysis that you would use for an SN2. You have a strong base. Strong base, why is it a strong base? Remember, metal is a gift. If you have a metal, I think some people have lost this, um, this, this idea of a strong base, try to get it back. Strong concentrated charge on a single atom is a strong base. Negative charge, negative or base. This is very different, okay? This oxygen is not positively charged. There's no acid here to protonate this in. Don't protonate it with the alcohol because alcohols are weak acids. Remember, you can drink ethanol. If you can drink ethanol, it can't be a very strong acid. Okay. So what happens? The base has a sense of urgency. It wants to attack directly. What is it looking for? Delta plus. Where does it find delta plus? Here and here. But this is not a carbocation. So you don't get into the thing about tertiary versus secondary in the sense of stability. These are not real carbocations. These are close to being normal bonds, as close as they can be in a three-membered ring. So what do we want to have happen? This guy is going to do an SN2 attack from the back at the less substituted side because the strong base wants a clear, free, open area to attack. It has to dig right into the carbon and pop that bond open, and it can't do that with a lot of crowding. It's too crowded over there. Remember, this is like an SN2. The acid catalyzed is like an SN1. SN2s work the best on primary substrates. Secondary, they're okay. All right, so what's the result? We're almost done with this one. The result is you would have O minus. I'm not drawing all the stereoisomers here. I'm trying to emphasize um, the regiochemistry of the reaction. How would you protonate this? You'd have to use your alcohol. But in this case, it's okay because you're just popping the proton from one, one, negative, um, one negative O to another negative O. It's okay to create base when you're in base. Okay, so that's all for our epoxide review. What was the time on that?